What's up, Caesar? Steve. How's it going? Really good, brother. Thank Always you. Uh, thank you for joining Mindfulness Marathon. It's it it means a lot to me that that you're part of this. I think uh, a lot of people are are really going to have so much insight into what you're saying with the human and animal connectivity, like how our, our relationships with, with animals or our pets and stuff like that's really more, It's also the importance of why, why you know, because there's three energies in the world. So you got love, people that love dogs, people who are afraid of dogs, and people who don't like dogs, right? So some people are going to love you, some people are going to be afraid of you, some people are going to hate you, right? And, but the fear and the hate is unnecessary. So when I tell people, listen, I don't tell you, I don't want you to have a dog, but I don't want you to have fear and hate because that's not beneficial to yourself, to your home, to your family, and to the planet. The, that energy is going to make you do the wrong thing. Right. You see it? So right. when you are in front of nature and a form of dog and a form of bird and a form of cat, whatever it is, they're going to feel the energy you have. Now, yeah. not the profession you have, not the money you have, not the age you have. So the mindfulness it's right there, you know, right there with what animals want for animal, for humans to, 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 to at first understand, to be mindful about the energy you are, how you, how you are respectful to your environment. Your environment has to feel beautiful, structured, and clean. Your energy has to be calm, confident, love, and joy. And the activities is, is body, mind, heart. If you follow that, you're going to have the off leash experience that everybody wants. Yeah. You know, which is trust, respect, and love. That uh, allows you to connect yourself to nature, communicate with nature, and have this honesty, integrity, loyalty thing that everybody talks about. Yeah. But how they connect is by being mindful. Yeah. You know, exactly. so, so the human has to be trained. That's why, you know, a long time ago when I came to America, it's like, it's not about training the dog. It's absolutely about training the human how to connect, communicate, so he or she can have the relationship they're looking for. Yeah, you know, I I, I just learned this. I'm pretty late in the late in the game on this, but love languages. You know, it's like uh, if you're having problems um, communicating with your spouse or your your partner, or your loved one. You know, it's like you're not. You have to speak their love language. You have to understand what what triggers their feelings the most and what you think you might think is what they want, what they want might not be what they really, what really like affects them. And I feel like what you're talking about, what you showed me personally, especially with my dog, when you came to see my dog yep. so many years ago, is like, you know, you know, my dog Coco's language. That's right. Like, I didn't know the language, you know what I mean? And, and once you shared to me how, like what they're thinking mm -hmm. as the dog whisper that you are, you know, like, and I got it. I was like, wow, I totally get it. But for so long, I spoke to my dog or communicated with my dog in a way that they were like, it doesn't affect me the way that you think it does, you know? Yeah. So there is that love language barrier. And I think it's like a lot of what, what you do is you, you help, like you said, train people. That's right this language so that we can communicate and have a better relationship with, with our animals, right? That's right, because animals are definitely open to live a natural, simple, and profound life. That's it, they don't know about money, fame, and power, right? So my clients at Harvard graduate, but they can't walk a chihuahua. I went to the White House to, to help the President of the United States, you know, but the dog don't know, he's living with the President of the United States. Yeah, I right. went to help Steve Aoki, yeah. I went to help Oprah, you know, Tony Robbins. And all these, all these people who are leaders in the world, the dogs don't see it that way. No. You know? So it's very important that we just understand, like you said, the love language or the way they comprehend, the way they understand, the way they connect. Because there's a program already inside their mind. They, they, as long as we tap into it, like gaming, right? As long as you tap into the game, you can play. Yeah. And you can win. But yeah. if you don't understand gaming, and then it's impossible for you to actually even play with people. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's a program already there. So nose, eyes, ears is the way dogs view the world. Humans are ears, eyes, nose. What we're doing right now is ears, eyes. A dog can never have a conversation with Steve Aoki over Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so that, that is something that we have to be respectful about it. Right. You know? It's like, it's like uh, 
I'm from Mexico. So in Mexico, you learn about the land, you learn about animals, you learn about being you know, hard workers. You know, Mexicans are hard workers. But one thing we don't learn is the love language of a woman, right? So, so, then, so that's what they call us machos. But it's not that we want to be machos. It's the education about connecting and communicating and having a relationship with a woman is not available to us. Then you come to America, and then I said, well, this is the love language of a woman. And it's women are for Venus, men are for Mars. So you have, a, you have knowledge available. Yeah, right. So that knowledge can give you access to connection, communication, and relationship. Right. So right. That's, that's what was missing in America before I came, is that, is that people love dogs like I've never seen in my life. i never seen a dog having a birthday party until I came to America. Right. You know, Christmas. The dog has gifts in Christmas. <laughs> Kids, where I'm from, I mean, Santa Claus was a we never came. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like if you go around, there's like all kinds of things for for dogs. <laughs> I don't know if the dog cares so much, you know. They celebrate life every day, by the way. You know, they live in the moment. The pursuit of happiness is every day. They live yeah. by the motor code. So birthdays is every day. The the gratitude yeah, exactly. of being alive every day. You know, they enjoy. They sniff the floor. They sniff everything and. And, and they enjoy the moment. That's something that, you know, people at one point try to do, you know. Oh, you have to live in the moment, which is what mindfulness is all about. You know, the pursuit of happiness. Are you happy with, with where you live, with who you are with and who you are, you know? So when, once a dog knows that your spirituality is not aligned, it's impossible for them to feel, uh, they, uh, to trust, you know, because they know that you're not happy. So if it's chaos, unhappiness and confusion inside of you, due to lack of education, the dog automatically animals are not gonna say, well, okay, uh, I'm gonna follow this human. They can't. They don't follow unstable leaders. We're right. the only species that follow unstable pack leaders. Only human beings follow instability. That's interesting. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. interesting when you, like, when you break it down like that. You know? you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. So why, why is it we are unstable? So, you know, I, I got this thing right here. This is, this, look, this is the people that, call, you know, very smart people that call me, you know? But the mindfulness comes from here. Mindfulness right. comes from, you know, common sense, you know, spirituality and unconditional love. Right. Right. So you have to have this three in order for you to actually say, I want to lead this pack. Yeah. You know, so the, the instincts is, is really understanding how to, how to assess and evaluate the situation. Unconditional love is, is you love uh, anybody as who they are. You're not trying to change anything. And the spirituality is pursuit of happiness, live in the moment, honesty, integrity, loyalty. That's it. Now you can actually say you can be the pack leader. Right. You know what I mean? So next time in the elections, we have to make sure that the humans have this three. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. They have this. this is the degree. This is like when you say Harvard, it comes from here. But yeah. the other three don't have it. Right. You see what I'm saying? We so my lot, We learn a lot from dogs. Animals. Earth. Animals. You know, Native Americans, Native Americans, Aboriginal people, I always make sure that, you know, we always honor uh, the people that were here before us who were connected to nature, you know, who, who, who really had that connection, who really used earth, you know, to cure and, and, you know, we call it organic now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, people, uh, you know, I, I love ayahuasca. So it, it, uh, people are, are getting into, into the, uh, like getting back into the roots, into like, uh, a shaman, a, a guru, right. yeah. you know what I'm saying? Somebody with knowledge from ancestry. And can we get, can we get back to simplicity, to natural, simple, profound? That's what we yeah. need. We need to get back, especially right now with this, with this uh, virus. You know, one little thing, one little virus. I respect the death of, that has happened. But at the same time, uh, as an immigrant, I see the opportunity that can, that can, that can happen from this situation, right? For immigrants, we're always looking at, at, the, at the pictures like, what are the opportunities here? Because right. there's endless opportunities in America, right? And, and so one thing that the, uh, the virus brought is, is agreement. One yeah. of the most important movement in the world is agreement, right? So the whole world agreed to behave the same way. Right. Social distance, watch your hands, cover your mouth. The whole world. You see it? So if we want to change something, if we want to change uh, uh, behavior, uh, bad behavior in a dog. We have to do the same thing as a world. Right. You see it? Because it's not the dog that want to misbehave. It's the dog is saying humans are not in tune. So when right. the human is not in tune, I can only show you how the human is. Yeah. 
So they're gonna go into fight, flight, avoidance. That's the simplest way of showing a behavior. When you don't feel well, you're gonna go into fight, flight, and avoidance. When you feel well, you're gonna go into surrender. And then you're gonna go into happy-go-lucky. And then you're gonna go into calm, calm, confident. That's how it goes. Surrender first, happiness, and then leadership. You see it? Because yeah. you have to go into like understanding what is happening, reflecting, and really feeling so you can see the big picture. Once you, once you get it, you get happy. And now you know what to do. You see, now you are a leader with consciousness. Right. You're, not, you're, you're mindful about everything, your home, yourself, your pack, your community. That's a good leader. Yeah, absolutely. You know, or a good member to society. You know, some people don't like the word leader for some reason. But at, at one point, you have to lead your life. <laughs> so, you know, and so it's, it's important that you are mindfully aware of who you are at that moment, what you want to do, and what is it that you're doing, and what is it you going, where is it that you're going. It's important. It's just, just to have humans around, they're conscious. Because a lot of people unconsciously living. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I, I think like one of the things for me as uh, you know, uh, being a pet owner um, and loving animals is like once again, what you're talking about is uh, understanding, you know, what they're thinking. Yeah. Right. And it's like, uh, I know we talked about this before, but like I, we, we talked about, you, you talked about routine before mm -hmm. and the, like the, the five main things that, an, you know, an animal is looking to do like what, right. and, and, and the do's and don'ts around those. Can right. we talk about those a little bit? So, so it's five body motions, right? So it's five body motions that animals do every single day. And in order for them to achieve uh, that they, they actually, their life was fulfilled. So one is what they're thinking and the other ones is what they need. So if you fulfill the needs and then it's easier for you to know what they're thinking. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. your job. You know, your job as a person to say, I, I want to I wanna be, uh, I want to adopt this dog. You know, I want to bring this dog into my life. At that moment, you just sign a contract and the universe that you're responsible of that animal needs, right? So then, so then the animal wakes up in the morning and the first thing they do is they stretch. So you have to provide or you have to, you know, uh, practice with, with, with a dog a moment of a stretch. Then they, then they want to walk, then they want to run, then they want to rest, then they want to sleep. Five body motions. So people call stretch yoga. So walk and run, this is when people go to work. Right. So instead of us walking and running, which right now you're seeing a lot of people walking and running because they, they can't go to work. So they go back to an animal self, right? And then resting, very important. This is meditation. This is what people call meditation. So you can have a healing, a sleeping moment. A sleep is a healing moment. It's the most important of all because this is the one that creates most of the energy or, or brand new energy. You see what I'm saying? So right now, people are, are realizing that for many, many years, dogs have to spend a lot of time in the resting and then sleeping. You see it? So people say, well, they go for like a 15 minutes walk and they say, well, I did walk my dog. That's not enough because the dog is spending 23 and a half hours inside the house. People are going crazy right now, right? right? Because they're uh, now are living the quarantine lifestyle. Well, before this happened, dogs were living this quarantine lifestyle. So just if people uh, respect the five body motions without even training the dog, you're going you're gonna to allow the dog to actually feel fulfilled. Because when people practice yoga, when people practice fitness, when people practice meditation, when people uh, sleep well, guess what? That human is a happy human. Yeah, fulfilled. Fulfilled, fulfilled. in a simple form. You know, so if that dog sees, hey, you, you allow me to have my five body motions, I'll follow you anywhere you want. I listen to you anywhere you want. I, I protect you anyway. So they give you honesty, integrity, loyalty. That's right. what you get in return. So when you people say, say I, need to, I need to make sure my dog learns sit down, stay calm, heal, becomes obedient. Wow, you're skipping a big thing. Because a lot, of the, a lot of times people are trained, doesn't mean they're balanced. Right. So you can send your kids to school, but the kid doesn't mean he's happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And the Asian world happens a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> been 16 hours in school and the kid doesn't know how to how to connect, how to communicate yeah, how to relationship. Yeah, exactly. So training doesn't mean happiness. Yeah. Training is a skill that you develop. You understand? But happiness is on the fulfillment. Right. You know, happiness, understanding, you know, the breath, even breathing is important. Yeah. That's why we have pets. We live for that, that, that feeling of 
love and community and and you know uh and that's one thing that that animals always do is they just give you unconditional love but you gotta you gotta like understand where they're coming from yeah so the the, the, uh, when a dog what a dog gives to the human you know and and a lot of times you can't get it from another human right and so a dog is always going to give you a belief he believes in you yeah he loves you unconditional and then he wants to do exercise with you which is fitness which is health so uh, he's gonna, if he has this his way, he's gonna say, we're gonna do health every day, we're gonna love each other unconditionally every day, and we're gonna believe in each other every day. That is the pillar of existence. Do you know what I mean? So you need, you need to believe in yourself, of course, but when somebody does the same thing in return, the energy grows. Your crowd, one person versus thousands of guys in there, it's a big difference. You know what I mean? When you do, when you when you're doing, when you do what you do is, is the energy that, that I see you uh, uh, creating, uh, and then you make people go once I you are making them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're because you're controlling the energy. You see what I'm saying? You're giving these people what they need. You're connecting them at a spiritual level, emotional level. It's it's not about thinking. It's about feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Music is, is, is a language. Music is, is important in the human world. We are the only species that actually creates music. You know what I'm saying? They have communication and it sounds like music, yeah. but we're the only one that can actually, with a certain vibration, trigger spirituality, trigger love, trigger instincts. Absolutely, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of course, it requires an intellect, but at the end of the day, that intellect goes deeper. Mm-hmm. You see it? And so music goes deep into your cells. You can't help it. But that's exactly what we, how we need to live with our, our dogs. Right. It shouldn't be superficial. It shouldn't be about you. It should be about the pack, about the connection, the communication. What, what is that species needs from you? They don't rationalize. So it's, it's your responsibility to do what is right for them. What are their needs before you, you think about your needs? It's like being a parent. You know, when you, whenever you are ready to have a child, you're going to see that your needs are secondary. I raised two boys, right? I raised thousands of animals, but it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's when you understand sacrifice. You understand, okay, it's not me, it's them. But with dogs, it should be the same. Dogs should be a, a, a perfect training wheel for humans to raise other humans in the future. You know, because dogs forgive you. Dogs forgive you from your mistakes. Humans become traumatized from your mistakes. Do you see what I'm saying? So a dog is not only a teacher, it's, it's, it's so many things, it's a guru. Is you know, is 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 I don't see a dog as a student, I see a dog as a teacher. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I as you're talking about that it made me think about uh the last time you came by. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't understand, you know, I it's I always like it's like a it's like a Rubik's Cube. I'm like trying to figure <laughs> out. You know, I'm like, I can't figure it out. I gotta call Caesar. I'm like, Caesar, please yeah. help me solve this puzzle. And so my dog, you know, a uh, little Uzi. He's just, he, he's, she's frantic. She's mm-hmm. like peeing everywhere and she's just like super hyper. And every time I touch her, she pees and she's, right. you know, and I'm like, Caesar, what do I do? And one thing after you, after you left, I really thought about energy because yeah. it's exactly what you taught me is that when she sees me, right? She's so excited that, and I'm excited to see her right. that she can't help herself and she just pees Mm -hmm. and she just like scurries around when you're like you need to be calm yeah because it's all about energy she sees your energy right so if you're calm before you even touch her and you have to be patient Mm -hmm. that's another whole thing i learned patience because when i want to see my dog i just want to hold my dog and and play with my dog and I, i i didn't understand how important that so i i sat down completely calm and just calm the energy down and then I, I had her sit there before I even touched her. And then finally, you know, her whole energy state calms down. And then, you know, I console her and I pet her and I give her kisses and stuff like that. But wow, a simple thing like that. I would have never figured out the Rubik's Cube. You know, it's such a <laughs> yeah. simple, simple concept. It's all about energy. It's incredible yeah. that you're able to see that immediately. Yeah, a lot of times people see excitement with happiness, 
you know, but it's a friendliness, you know, even, you know, even the people that go to, to enjoy music, there, there has to be a limit where they, they don't want to pass by because then you can go into a frantic state. You know, you can go beyond help, right? And that's not what you want. You just want people yeah. to take it to the highest level that they can hold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so when a dog becomes overly excited, enters into a chaotic state, okay? And so if the human comes with excitement, the, the organs inside are not going to be able to, to, to hold on. You know, that, that dog gets overly excited to the point yeah. that the bladder just... Yeah. <laughs> It's all over the place. So that, so chaos, a, a, in a moment of chaos, calmness is the best friend. Yeah. You know, in a moment of uncertainty, in a moment of fear, in a moment of tension, in a moment of whatever it is, calmness is always the best friend. One thing that a, a, a lot of times people don't practice is calmness. They don't practice, they don't master calmness. To me, mindfulness is about mastering calmness before you even invite chaos into your life. Right. But most people do the opposite. They go chaos first, and then they seek for help after that. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? So the steps are backwards. Right. You know, calmness is the foundation of, of a creation, healing, learning, everything you want to achieve at a mastery level. Calmness is right behind. But that's animals. You know, animals, they stretch, they wake up, they yeah. stretch. And of course, they have, to, they have to move because that's the only way they find food and water. So they, they have no refrigerator. They can't call Uber. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they actually do it themselves. A fish have to swim, a bird have to fly, and a dog has to walk. So when you, when you see dogs in a, in a third world country and they're walking, they're looking for food and water. They're not looking to hurt anybody. Yeah. So in a, in a dog in America needs to walk, not because he needs food. He needs to exercise so he can get hungry. You see it? So, so it's like going to the gym here, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the exercise, the, we have to see it as a fitness. So we can trigger uh, like some kind of job. Okay, I got hungry. I'm thirsty. Now the human provides this. Now it tastes better when you work for it. Right. You see what I mean? If yeah. you just give breakfast in the morning when a dog has not even done a walk or run, he's, he, he know instinctually he didn't earn it. So you're not even allowing the dog to utilize his natural instinct of survival. They want to work for things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a right for, to them. It's a right to have a job. They, they want to work. That, even whatever breed it is, it doesn't matter. If some people say, well, bulldogs are. No, bulldogs can also exercise. Bulldogs can also have a job. Now, they're not going to do it like, like a husky, right? Yeah. Then, but they still need to be challenged. It's, it's, you know, it's like having a chubby kid. You still have to exercise a chubby kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's healthy for the chubby kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you say, well, oh, he's chubby, he doesn't. No, no, just, just do it short, short distance and then let him cool off and then do it again. Yeah. Don't tell him that he's handicapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Treat right. him like a normal child. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, that, so he feels like he earned. That's, that's his pursuit of happiness. Yeah. When he goes for a walk and a run, that's the moment where he's doing his pursuit of happiness. Right, right. You know? Otherwise, they're going to end up doing a lot of resting and a lot of sleeping. And that's what they call it, couch potatoes. And that's yeah. why a lot of times the bulldogs get that, 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 um, that label. Oh, bulldogs are couch potatoes. No, it's just you don't, you don't you know, promote fitness. Bulldogs were, were actually bred for old dogs. <laughs> to, you know what I mean? To be gladiators. Yeah. It's just the, the, the nose the way they made the nose, that doesn't, doesn't allow them to breed well. Yeah. Okay? Doesn't mean the mind doesn't want to, you know, be a yeah, gladiator. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, Caesar, what, what, what can we do to uh, uh, engage, activate uh, people watching? What, what's like a challenge we could do to have them have better relationships with their, with their uh, pets, their animals. And this is, this is a, a simple one, which is actually the one no one has ever has mastered yet. And it's a, a, a good long walk with your dog where the dog doesn't put the nose on the ground, doesn't scout around, doesn't, you know what I'm saying? And it feels proud. So put the leash all the way in the top like a dog show. Okay, are you seeing it, right? When the, so so that's, gonna, that's gonna make the nose go away from the ground immediately. 60% of the brain is controlled by the nose. 60% of the brain. Wow, okay? wow. So by having that position, you take him into a proud position. That's why in a dog show, you, you, you see the leash all the way in the top. Mm -hmm. 
mm. right? So as soon as yeah. they stop, they, the head is high. So that's that supermodel moment, Yeah. right? And then the long distance is what's going to make them drain energy. Mm. So that's a 100% focus. That's, that, if people do it uh, one hour a day, or it depends on the, you know, on the breathe, they can do it 30 minutes and then rest and then do it again, but it's one hour. That, that's, I, I just want to see the change that that's going to do. That's simple. Homeless people are a perfect example. Homeless people walk dogs off leash. Nine out of 10 homeless have a pit bull off leash. The dog is in the back. Okay, so so it's that's like, just, almost dude, like a pack leader. Yeah, but pack leader, right? when they're puppies, they follow their mother. So automatically, they go in the back. Oh, right. Okay. You see baby elephants, yeah. they don't go in the front. They go in the back. Yeah. Anything that is baby-like, go in the back. Yeah. Understand? So, if, so it, it, the back means you're following. Even in the marching bands, they have a pack leader. Yeah. Michael Jordan is the pack leader. They yeah. follow my, okay, so everybody knows that, that whoever's in the back is following. So yeah. that, that, that makes that one be attentive to you. Yeah. But when a dog is in front of you, he's attentive to the environment. Yeah. That's not a healthy walk. Right. So and that walk is going to give you a Chuck E. Cheese moment. Yeah. It's going to be super excited by the time you- It's you chaotic, like chaotic a bit. You know? chaotic, yeah, because it's all over the place. Yeah. It's all over the place. It's, it's follow, play, and explore. That dog is an explore state. People yeah. call that walking the dog. No, no, no. That dog is pulling, exploring. Right. <laughs> that's, like, that's like a lot of dogs. You know what I mean? That's like a lot of owners. Actually, oh, not a lot, dogs. a lot of owners too. Yeah, you know? Because in their mind, that dog is having their own time. But that own time is finding pee and poop and stopping every time they want. Yeah. So he, he's stopping every time they want, finding pee and poop. Pee and poop makes them excited. Yeah. And leading and stopping makes them leader. So right. now you have a leader and excited pulling you. Yeah. Right? So, so how are you going to change the behavior when you're following the dog? Yeah. You know, handicapped people, a dog is right next to them. Mm. For a reason, because handicapped people for the most part, are they're blind. So the dog has to block them from obstacles. But the dog is following the handicap. Wow. Oh. Handicapped people make dogs normal. Normal people make dogs handicapped. Why the handicap makes a dog normal? Because it gives him a job. That dog has to be attentive yeah. to, the, to, the, to the handicapped person. Yeah. Those is away from the ground, and that dog is paying attention to what that human needs. You see it? So the challenge is very simple, but no one in the world is doing it. No, no, I, I've never seen anyone do that. So this is, really, this is actually very, very insightful. But how, how long uh, before you see a change? Huh? How long? Oh, in two weeks, you're going to see a dramatic change. Remember, it takes, it takes repetitions yeah. for, for anything, right? So in 21 days is, is, is where you see a shift. Even when people go to the gym, the first two weeks is the weeks where you might quit. Yeah. The third week, if you push yourself on the third week, you stay in the gym. Yeah, exactly. It's a habit. You know what I mean? The rewiring of the brain. That's right. So at it's least give you 21 days of repetitions, and you're going to see how by you staying consistent, the dog say, oh, so you want me to follow you. No problem. That should, I should be doing this for, since the beginning, especially yeah. for people who, who actually had a puppy from the beginning. Right. You see, because that puppy only knows to follow you. Do you ever let the uh, dog explore? Go Absolutely. In mode? Absolutely. So, but, but so first he follows you and yeah. then you can, you can practice the play or explore as a reward. Okay. You see it? So follow is, 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 uh, is what you do in school. When you go to school, you follow the teacher. Right. What they give you as a reward is to play and explore. Yeah. So do like, like, let's say like 30 minutes follow. That's right. And then, and then you, you, and then you let him play. Right. Then you let him play. I, I, I do not recommend play in the streets. I do recommend exploring the streets. Right. You know, the play yeah. is more like a dog park type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's where you act. That's, when you, that's your basketball court. That's kind of like you follow to the park and yeah. then they explore. And, right? then, and that's a reward. And then going back, follow. Back to follow. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's right. Listen, military people know this very well. They have yeah. to follow somebody, and the reward is play and explore. That's when they go to the bars. That's when they go play basketball. 
or, or, <laughs> or any kind of sock. You know what I'm saying? That's when they do it. Military people have this animal uh, structure to the teeth. Then at some, at some points, like you can almost go off leash, right? I mean, yeah, they, I mean, like, like because of the the brain, the dog's brain's rewired. Absolutely. That, listen, we're the only species that put leashes on animals. They aren't born to be on leashes. No, we're the only species, the only species that put animals in a zoo. They aren't no. born to be behind walls. No, no. You, no. you see what I'm saying? No. So it's so it's very important that that you know, that, that we actually uh, understand the level of respect. We, uh, uh, how we need to behave, and yeah. right now is a perfect moment. Yeah, you know, the reset, like you you keep saying, reset is perfect moment to reset. Absolutely, it's a perfect moment to go back to natural, simple, and profound. It's right. a perfect moment to be there for someone who has been there for us for a long time, for hundreds of years. You see what I'm saying? This is the moment where we can just uh, apologize in yeah. a way and, and 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 go back to service. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is I did, listen it's People don't know that they don't know, you know? So knowledge is, uh, this is so important. You know, when you, when, when they told me, hey, Steve is doing mindfulness, it's perfect because people don't know that yeah. they don't. Know. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I always, I always move with empathy and compassion, no matter where I am in the world, because they don't know. Even when people talk about, you know, uh, uh, people eating dogs, they don't know that they don't know. You know, this is what they know. Right. One thing that I always say, listen, let's do housekeeping in our- It hurts me. When you say that, I'm like, oh. Yeah, but, but look at this. Watch this, Steve, uh, because I think we, it's important that we have a, uh, that we're honest to ourselves as well, because in, in some shape or form, we do a different type of uh, uh, a pain here. So in America, in America, two to three million dogs a year get euthanized. Hmm. Two to three million dogs. You see what I mean? Innocent dogs get euthanized due to overpopulation. So how do we stop that pain? Right. It hurts you as well. Yeah, of course. You see what I'm saying? It hurts. Yeah. Dead is dead. You see what I mean? How, how you do it is, 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 is you know, it's cultural. Yeah. But, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, in America, it's two to three million dogs. Wow. A year. And now, taxpayers pay for that euthanization. Wow. So even if you don't know, you're participating. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I don't. I didn't even know that. And then, <laughs> you know, you get sad when like you see outside outside your home. Yeah, uh, what's happening? And then you're like, what? In this country, this is this is being killed. Yeah, over uh, due to overpopulation. Right. It's as simple as that. It's overpopulation. You know, right now, uh, uh, where people, uh, one great that thing that happened is uh, uh, shelters got empty because people needed some kind of challenge. So people went and foster dogs. Doesn't mean they're gonna stay in their home. Right. You see it? Many of yeah. those dogs are gonna are gonna go back. So the shelters are gonna get full again. There's a there's actually a big statistic right here. There's in New York City and Los Angeles, the ASPCA, uh, which is uh, I think what you're talking about. So fostering is up two hundred percent. Yeah. Adoption is up seven hundred percent since the beginning of stay at home restrictions. So I mean it's a clearly what you're saying is happening and it's incredible. And I mean, that's one thing, you know, we definitely need to promote is that um, if you're at home, foster, if you're not yeah. ready to adopt foster, foster. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a big thing that's happening right now is, and it's helping a lot of people. It's helping a lot of animals. That's right. Fostering allows you uh, to learn about dogs, right? Before you actually commit to 18 years, 20 years, 16 yeah. years, the beauty right now, science is, allow, is allowing our dogs to live a little longer, right? And so that, that's the beauty. But at the same time, a lot of people are not, are not educationally ready. But fostering will give you uh, the ability to, to help somebody and learn from somebody. Right. You see, you don't have to adopt, but you definitely adopt the, the, the concept of helping. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that is, that is called fostering. Yeah, adopt, uh, yeah, I like the adopting the concept of helping. Helping. Like you start like with that. that. Yeah. Start with that because that's going to help the planet. You know, I have a tagline, better humans, better planet. As long as we're helping, we're going to change pollution. Right. We're going to help negativity. We're going to help global warming. You know what I'm saying? Because it took all of us unconsciously to do it. Yeah. You see it? So the whole point of mindfulness is to make you conscious of how can you contribute at home, always begin at home, 
self and family. Always take care of the pack. Because then when you go help, you go help with all that power. Mm -hmm. You see it? Your home is perfect. Your yourself is perfect. Your family is taking care. And now people are going to feel that energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus uh, telling people what to do, but at home is bad. That's what I was saying about some people, <laughs> some cultural, you know, do this yeah. behavior, but we do it here. Hindus yeah. are never attacking America by eating cows. Mm -hmm. And for Hindus, cow is God. Yeah. You see, it? I'm not saying I agree with anything. I'm just saying, let's, let's be respectful first yeah. so we yeah. can change people with empathy and compassion. Yeah. You see it? Like people yeah, don't yeah. know that they Great don't point. know. Great point. Yeah, people don't know that they don't know. So you have to understand that the, uh, the, the people who are leading in, in, you know, us, they haven't given us natural, simple, profound uh, messages. They, 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 don't, they don't focus on mindfulness. They don't focus on consciousness. No, not that the whole world is taking cold showers like when. You know what I mean? He said, no, everybody must take cold showers. And I'm saying everybody must walk a dog uh, with, you know, nose away from the ground, very proud of yourself in at least one hour. Watch what happens. You know, one is meditation, no motion, and one is meditation in motion. Yeah. You know, to be in the eyes, you have to stay still. To be with a dog, you have to move. Yeah. So they're both meditation. Right. One is in, 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 in one place, and the other one is in motion. Dogs, they enjoy the motion, but they, yeah. you have to stay focused. You know, calm, confident, love, and joy. Calm, confident, love, and joy. So then you do that for an hour, Steve. You're moving. You're sweating, you're focusing, you're loving, you're believing, you come back and then you practice your, uh, your separation so your dog doesn't have separation inside him. Then you go to work. That's great. Cesar, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. This is amazing. Um, thank you, brother. I think you're really helping out a lot of people with these messages. And, um, and I'll see you soon, Cesar. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate right. it. Thank you.